Sigue sin bien. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the uh, parent information event for this week. Glad that you could join us. Um, I'm hoping some more people might be on their way in just a moment, but I'm going to pull up some slides and we will slowly get started with an agenda. Here it comes. So I want to talk very briefly about the new uh, cohort of pupils who will be joining the school in September. It's very exciting to look forward to the to a new group joining us next year. Um, we're going to give you a brief update about remote learning and how that's going to fit alongside the getting back to school plan. We're going to talk about homework, which is something we want to make sure we start well with when children do get back into school. Then we'll give some reminders about what to expect next week and how to prepare for it. We're going to do some quick thinking about staying safe and then I'm going to give you an update about centre assess grades and how what we know so far about how they're going to work. OK, let's talk about the class of 2028. So we're going to have um, a new group of year sevens joining the school next year. We're going to make them feel very, very welcome and they will be with us until the summer of 2028 when they're ready to go off to university. We had over 500 applications for places at the school. That's something we can all be incredibly proud of, that we've built a school community working together, pupils, parents, teachers, to, to make a school that so many families want their children to attend. And those of us that are lucky enough to have spaces here need to, to feel really grateful for those because we know there's so many families who are going to be disappointed that they weren't able to get a place. But it's always very exciting to be a school that's so oversubscribed. We're going to be sending out welcome packs to all of those families tomorrow to make them feel really welcomed to the school and to introduce myself to them. And there'll be a schedule of events coming up over the next few weeks and months. We know so many of the pupils that are coming are siblings, um, of children who are already here. That's exciting. Um, and we're looking forward to seeing as many new families join us as well, too. One of the things that you'll notice is that we've offered 120 places in year seven next year. That's a change to what's happened in the last few years. So as many of you will know, in the current year seven, in the current year eight, we have 160 children. And in the current year nine, we also have a year group that's slightly larger at around 140. The reason why in recent years we've taken a larger group of children, because in the history of the school, the school had always previously been 120. The reason why in the last few years more children have been taken in is because many of you will know there were plans to expand the school, to build a new building on the school site. That plan isn't going ahead anymore. And I think I shared a brief update about that earlier in the year. That was a result of the local authority who were going to provide the funding for the school to grow saying that because of COVID and other reasons, they weren't able to do it anymore. So that plan stalled. What that did is give us an opportunity as a school to decide how we wanted the school to be in the future. And we've made a decision that although it would have been exciting to grow and we could have found different ways to go about growing the school and making it bigger, actually we think it's better for everybody if we commit to being what the school was originally planned to be which is a small school where we knew all of the children and all of their families very, very well, and where every pupil could go to the sixth form because we had enough spaces for everybody, and that that meant we could see all of our children through to university when they're 18. And when we talk about climbing the mountains to university, it would mean that we really meant it, that it was really possible in our school. So that's a bit of a change about how we're planning for the school to be in the future. It's a big, important decision but it means I'm really confident that we can provide an excellent education to every single one of the children that comes to the school. OK, let's start thinking and that's all about the future. Let's start thinking about the next few weeks. And to start with, we want to think about how remote learning is coming to an end. And I'm going to hand over to Miss O'Connor to do that just now. Good evening, everybody. As Mr Wimmer said, we're thinking about how the next week and a bit is going to go ahead. And what we want to be sure of is that pupils have the smoothest possible transition from remote learning to in-school learning. And so teachers are going to continue to set assignments and lessons through MS Teams, just as we've been do doing throughout this period. Remote learning will transition to pre-recorded lessons on Friday. So any live lessons that your children have tomorrow will be their last live lessons of this period. On Friday, 
And for all of next week, any lessons that your students have will be videos. They'll be found in the same place that they've always found their video lessons and they'll submit their assignments just as they've done throughout. The remote learning will continue for every class until the day they are back in school for the full day. So if your child is coming in on Tuesday for their test, if your child's in year seven or eight, they're going to have some remote learning set for them on Tuesday. It will only be three subjects worth, so they can do it before or after they come in for their test. Then when they get home, they'll complete anything they haven't done yet, and they will also have some homework to complete. Every single student is going to get some homework on the day that they come into school for their test, and that's going to be due the following morning. So again, looking at the example of year seven and eight, they'll receive some homework on Tuesday and it will be due on Wednesday morning. That means that your children will still receive a full timetable of lessons throughout the course of next week, whether or not they're back with us full time on Wednesday or on Friday. I also mentioned there that your child will get homework from their very first day back in school. I spoke briefly about that last week too, that starts then on Wednesday the 10th of March. So there will be one piece of homework per day and it will until Easter only be set in English or maths. The work will be set on Hegarty or Microsoft Teams just like it has been throughout, throughout the school closure and it will be tracked daily. So any pupils that haven't completed their homework will attend a homework club that afternoon the very same day that it was um, that it was tracked so that they can catch up. They can then go home and complete their next set of homework. And we will be looking to expand this and make sure that children are having the opportunity to practice all of their subjects outside of school after Easter. So lots of things to look forward to and to help us build up, uh, build on the momentum that we've um, gathered whilst we've been using these um, online platforms. I'm going to hand back over to Mr Rimmer now, who's going to speak more about what happens on those days when they're in. OK, so that's about homework. I've spoken before in these meetings about how important I think homework is. I think if we become a school where every single day, every child is doing high quality homework, then the grades those children get when they're older are going to be transformatively different. So I'm going to ask for every parent's complete support in making sure that we're getting high quality homework from pupils every single day, starting from the first time they come back into school. Let's think then about then what coming back to school will look like. So as I explained earlier in the week when I wrote to you, pupils will start with a 90 minute session where they'll come into school wearing a face covering and maintaining social distancing. And they will do that on the day before their first official back day back at school. They will do three things on that day. They'll be tested for COVID. They'll have a practice lesson with one of their teachers so we can get used to the routine of being back in lessons and learning again. And they'll get set their first piece of homework. I shared these dates and times with you previously. I'll leave them on the screen just for a moment so anyone that wants to make a note of them now can do. But you can find them all on the website if you navigate to the letters page and then you'll find the letter for year seven or the letter for your eight or the letter for your nut for year nine and that will have this table on it as well so you're looking on the left hand side of each table to find your class or your child's class and you're seeing what time to arrive and you'll see that the child children are going to be here for 90 minutes so seven bolt and one are going to arrive on tuesday at 8 30 and they're going to leave at 10 and in that time they're going to have their covid test they're going to have a practice lesson learning with their teachers and they're going to be set their first piece of homework. It's really important as a family that there's a plan to make sure the children attend and attend on time and that the pupil has a plan to make sure they get all of their remote learning done as well. Either before or after they come, depending on whether their meetings in the morning or whether their meetings in the afternoon. So that's the plan for getting started. In terms of being ready for that first 90 minute session, pupils must arrive on time. So if their class is due to be here at 8.30, they must be here by 8.30. If their class is due to arrive 
at 11 o'clock. They must be here by 11 o'clock. What I'd ask is you actually plan to get here about 10 minutes before that time. There'll be teachers and leaders there to welcome you and to look after you because we, we every minute is going to be very important in terms of both getting the testing done for COVID, but also in getting those practice lessons up and running. Pupils should come to the main entrance of the school. One year group will line up on the left hand side where the, the pathway is. Some children will line up on the right hand side, which faces towards Chandos where the steps are, and there'll be teachers there to direct them around which side they should be lined up on. They should come in their full uniform. It's a good opportunity for families to check that we know where everything is, that we can find our tie, we can find our blazer. And it's good for us to know as a school exactly, definitely for sure, all of the children will be fully prepared for their first day back the next day. We're asking them to bring their school bag and their pencil case with them. And it's really important, as I said before, as well as doing ready to come to school and do really well, they need to have a plan for getting their remote learning done that day as well. The most important thing is that when the child arrives, they arrive with consent for us to test them. As I explained before, there are three ways as a parent you can provide consent. One, you can go on the website, click on the letter for your child's year group and click on the link to an online consent form and fill that in. I'm very, very grateful in the last two days over 150 families have done that since Monday, so thank you. Two, if you don't want to fill the form in online, you can fill in the hard copy, the paper version of the form, which has been posted to your house and your child can bring that with them on the day. Three, if you want to speak to somebody on the phone for them to ask you the questions and then they will fill the form in for you, you can email info at arcsandalbans.org or call the school to arrange a time for someone to do that for you over the phone. Every family needs to provide consent for their child to be tested and every child needs to be tested. It is the only way we can keep each other safe. And crucially, if we have lots of children who aren't tested, then it's going to be more likely that whole classes need to stay away from school. And we don't want that to be the case. So we need consent from every family. If you've got any worries or concerns about providing consent, I need you to get in touch and I need you to ask to speak to me so I can talk to you about that and reassure you. But we have to have 100% consent from every family and every pupil. I want to talk about the, the, what could happen in terms of if we had to send classes home again because we were worried about COVID being in the school. That might happen because we're going to be bringing back together lots of people for the very first time and we're going to want to be very cautious and keep everybody safe. And that will be OK because we now we've got a good plan for remote learning. But from now on, it's not a choice. We can't choose be at school or be at home doing remote learning. The reason why it's not a choice is two reasons. One, the quality of remote learning cannot stay that high because teachers can't be preparing remote learning lessons and lessons for children in school. And two, the learning that children will do in school with their teacher is going to be 10, 20, 30, 40 times better than any learning they could be doing at home on a computer. So we need consent, we need to test every child and we need every child to be at school every single day. Obviously, if something happens and we have to make a decision for this class or that year group not to be in school, we'll have a plan, but we don't want that to be happening a lot. The other key date then is to recognise when your child will be coming back to school full time. So the day before they'll have been in for their 90 minute session to have a test and do their practice lesson. And then on Wednesday the 10th, we're looking forward to year seven and eight being here with us all day for a full day at school. Year nine and 10 will then join on Thursday and year 11 and 13 will join on Friday. And as Miss O'Connor explained, remote learning will continue until this date for all year groups. I want to finish by reminding you about how we're going to stay safe as school reopens. We're going to do the testing and we're going to have your consent for that. We're going to be asking pupils to be wearing face coverings more often than they were before. They're going to need to wear a face covering whenever they move around the school and they're going to need to wear a face covering in their lessons. They need to be ready. We can't be providing a face covering ourselves to every child. We'll run out. And it's expensive for the school. 
Families, we need you to provide your child with a face covering. I would suggest they have more than one so they can change them during the day so they don't get uncomfortable. Two, I advise you to get cloth ones that can go in the washing machine so you can clean them every day because they're going to need to wear one every day for the foreseeable future. And then the other things we're doing to stay safe is we're going to carry on with the zones and bubbles for each class, just like we had before the Christmas holidays. We will use the separate spaces for break and lunch times like we did before the holidays. And we'll have the different entrances and the different start times for each year group. But crucially, the first time they come, when they come for their 90 minute lesson, they're coming to the main entrance. When they come back the next day, they will use whichever entrance they were using before. I want to go now and talk about centre assess grades. I know lots of parents, particularly those with children year 11 and year 13, want to know a lot more about how this is going to work. I'm going to share with you what we know so far, which isn't everything. It's not the whole plan, but it's something that's useful to know. The first thing to know is that on the 18th of June, that's when we have to finish the process in school. We have to have decided the grades for each child by that time and be ready to share them with the exam boards. To make that possible, in late May, pupils will do some sort of mini exams, a formal extended assessment in the sports hall where we can assess their learning. And when that's not going to decide their whole grade, if they have a bad day and do a bad job on that paper, it's not the end of the world, but we're going to use it to anchor the judgment about their grade. It's going to be a starting point that we look at to decide what their grade should be. Also, we need every pupil to complete any coursework in the subjects where they have coursework, because that also needs to be part of our evidence about what grade they could get. I want to now provide clarity around five things. One, fairness. Two, capability. Three, appeals. Four, assessment. And five, next steps. So in terms of fairness, I want to reassure all pupils and parents that while the system isn't perfect, it will be fair. The reasons why it'll be fair is because all schools across the country will be following the same guidance and they'll be following the same guidance that's coming from exam boards as well as from Ofqual, from the government. There'll be moderation that takes place with other schools and for us we're lucky we're part of the ARC network, we have lots of schools we can moderate with. We're going to make sure pupils are only assessed on what they've been taught. We're going to have a process where pupils can tell us about any extenuating circumstances that means they've not been able to learn as effectively this year as their peers. Our teachers and our leaders are going to have training about how to avoid being biased when making judgments. And we're going to make sure that all our decisions are evidence based. I'm also really confident that we're going to be able to do this well. We're going to be able to do it accurately. And that's because we already do this quite a lot anyway. Every single one of the subjects at our school has some sort of coursework or centre based assessment where teachers decide, decide grades for pupils. This is just a much bigger version of that. The other thing that makes me confident is we did this process last year, slightly different, but a very similar process with last year's year 11 and year 13. And we know that 99.999% of those pupils were all very pleased with the grades that they ended up with. And it was believed that that was a very fair process. Crucially, we've, we've got a great team of teachers and curriculum leaders at our school. Lots of them are already people who do marking and run assessments for national exam boards. And so we know we've got experts in our school who are going to be leading this process. The, the guidance that's come out is really clear that there'll be a really transparent and available accessible appeals process where families or pupils who are not happy with the grade they've been awarded can appeal to both the school and to exam boards. And we'll talk a lot more about how that will work nearer the time. And there's also the possibility of children who are unhappy with the grades, maybe being able to take part and do an exam in autumn. So next September, or October time. Well, that's not something I would recommend to families. It's going to be very difficult to be able to remember all the knowledge and all the learning they have now and to think they would do better in autumn I think is something that may be a bit too optimistic. We want children to get the grades that they need to earn now rather than waiting. Finally, this is the most important bit, assessment. How will we assess these grades? 
The most important thing to say is that pupils will sit some form of mini exam in late May. These will be marked and grey boundaries will apply and these will form the basis of any decision that we make. That will be the first thing we look at when deciding their grade. It won't be the only thing. The final grade will also be informed by topic tests that they'll take place in class after the Easter holidays and that will give us some specific evidence about how well children can answer questions about a particular topic or a particular assessment objective. We'll also have the coursework in lots of their subjects that they complete as well. The final grade though will also reflect their mock exam results and their predicted grades. We will look back and think has this pupil just had a bad day when they've done this extended assessment and we'll be kind and we'll judge that and we'll take that into consideration when deciding their grade and we'll, you will look back at their mock, mock results or their predicted grades to help us do that. We will also start thinking about those extenuating circumstances and the information that families and pupils have provided to us and we'll talk really clearly about a system and a process for that as soon as we've got it set up. So in terms of next steps, before the Easter holidays, so in about two weeks time, we're going to publish to all pupils and families a, an overview of which assessments they're going to sit, what those mini exams will include, which topics they may include, and guidance about how to, to revise for them. So you will know exactly how children are going to be assessed before the Easter holidays, and that will give us the time after the Easter holidays to help children prepare. Some families have spoken to me about intervention and the possibility of children getting extra support. There will be some of that. That will be particularly for children who are at risk of not passing their English and Maths GCSEs, because we know that's incredibly important. It may also be available to support children in finishing coursework to a high standard. But it's not something we're going to be offering for lots and lots and lots of children, partly because we cannot offer it for everybody. And given the nature of the assessment this year, there's a risk that actually it could cause some unfairness if some children got more support than others. Crucially, when we're thinking about intervention in a normal year, we're needing to do that to cram and prepare for big lengthy exams that are covering the whole span of a two year course. That's not going to be the nature of exams this year. So that last minute crap cramming, that last minute revising isn't going to be so necessary. Finally, we know we need to talk to you about when year 11 will formally end and when year 13 will formally end and about how transition to sixth form, alternative destinations and universities will work. We just need to ask you to be a little bit patient around that as we get some more information from the government about what that should look like. But as soon as we do know more, we will tell you. I'm going to pause there with the slides and we're going to open the question and answer process. Um, in just a moment, Mr Cole, I'm sure we'll have it open and will announce to us. Dropped out then. Oh, good. I was worried that the computer had stopped, but it has not. Um, so we'll see that the question answer process will come up as we've done every week. You can type your questions uh, into the into the question answer box and um, we will do our best to answer as many as possible. We've got one already. That's Mr Cole telling us it's open. That's what he does all the time. And it makes me excited that we've got a question and it's just Mr Cole telling us some things. We'll give you a couple of minutes to write some questions. We'll publish them and I'll try and answer. Here we go. Why aren't year 13 coming back first? Really good question. It was obviously a very hard decision to choose that sequence of which children come back when. And there, there's no perfect answer because everybody would think well you could do it in a different order. The reason why I've gone for the order that I have done is it is much, much, much harder for younger children to learn online than it is for older children. Older children have had live lessons for a lot longer than younger children because with the younger children didn't have live lessons until the last few weeks. Also, Part of the reopening date the government has set is about the economy getting up and running and parents who work will need their younger children to be back in school and looked after. And so we think it's most urgent that those younger children get back into school for those reasons, because we're more confident in the ability of older children to learn at home for longer. I appreciate it's not perfect. It would have been great to have everybody back at the same time, but that wasn't an option either. 
we had to make some tough decisions. I trust we're going to have more than enough time to make sure that all the children in year 11 and year 13 get the education they need to get the grades that they need. Let's see what questions we have coming next. Will the lesson timetable still be the same? Good question. Yes, pretty much. Between now and the Easter holidays, the timetable for each class when they're in school will be the same as it was before the Christmas holidays. We then may make some changes after the Easter holidays, but we want things to start calm when school first begins. Will the different year groups still be in different areas? Yes, so pretty much everything will be the same about how the school runs as it was before the holidays until at least Easter. We'll then review things. The big differences will be the expectations around face coverings. That'll be one big difference and the testing for COVID will be the other. Do we think wearing masks in the classroom will disrupt learning? Yes, we don't think it's going to be perfect. I wish we didn't have to do it, but because of safety, we need to. What I'm hoping is, one, we don't need to do it for too long. So we're going to review at the Easter holidays to decide whether it's something we still need to do. Two, there's lots of things that we thought were going to be very difficult this year that we thought we weren't going to be able to do. We didn't think we'd be able to have really good live lessons online. We didn't think we could get all of the children to do lots of remote learning every day. But we thought about it, we made a plan, we worked really hard and we were able to do it. And so I'm really confident that although it isn't a perfect situation, I'm confident we'll be able to make it work. Are the children needed to return the laptops and the dongles? Thank you for asking that question. So the laptops, no. Um, the laptops are something we're providing to children to use to study at home, particularly with the plan that we have around homework. Um, we're going to want children to be able to complete homework online as well. So I hope that's something that families value. And in terms of the dongles, I'm just looking at Mr Cole, but I think I'm right in saying that no, those dongles will stay at home with you. The contract, though, may end at a certain point. If you've got any particular questions about the dongles, then get in touch with us. Let's see what's next. Um, I'm just scrolling down on my computer. Um, again, lots of questions about the laptops. Um, as I said, they're staying at home with you for now. Will students be able to mix with students who are in different classes? Thank you for asking that question. So. At the, at the very beginning of time, no. So in the first week, we're not going to have the children go outside to break and lunch together. They're just going to stay in their class. And apart from a couple of times in year 11, children aren't going to mix classes for options, lessons and things like that either. So for the first week, at least no mixing with other classes. In the second week and in the third week, children will mix outdoors when they have break or lunch. And we can think that's safe because we know about transmission rates outside being less. I think the other thing that we though may be something to bear in mind is that there will still be some mixing in years 10 and year 11 when they have options lessons, but we teach those in the largest classrooms possible. So there can be some social distancing and crucially now we're we'll wearing masks. Let's see what question is coming next. Um, got lots of questions about testing coming up, so we're going to get a few of those coming through and I'll do my best to answer them. First question. Um, is the COVID test a throat and nasal swab or just a navel swab? Good question. So the COVID tests that all schools are using across the country are the same tests. They're the lateral flow device tests, which you can read about online. They are a nose and throat swab. We've been practicing them with the children who are in school now during community classroom time. They've been doing them with no problems. We're really confident in them working well. We're going to give the children lots of guidance and support about how to do it well and do it safely. Let's see what other questions we might have around uh, testing. Um, and we will get those up on the screen. Just waiting for things to load up. Give me one second. When we go into school, do we have to take a COVID-19 test? Even if, Yes, good question. So the government official guidance on reopening schools 
is that schools are expected to test all pupils and all staff twice a week. So every single pupil needs to be tested. Obviously, we cannot test pupils without their parents' consent. And that's why the parents providing those consent forms, either online, on the phone or, or on paper, is so important. But yes, every pupil will be tested. So we can't force anybody to be tested. I can't I can't tell children that they're going to be in trouble. I can't tell parents that their child can't come to school because it it's not compulsory in that sense. But I want to be very clear with everybody that in choosing not to have children be tested, you're making the situation more risky for everyone else. Because we know that most of the time, COVID is spread by people that don't have symptoms. So I feel fine now today, feel very healthy, hopefully look healthy-ish but I might have the virus. I might just not have symptoms of it. Then if I sit next to somebody in class, then I might give them the virus and they might not get sick, but then they may go home and they might live with their elderly grandparents. They might live with their parent who has a health condition and might take the virus to that person and that person could get very sick or even die. So it's really important that we say, right, as a whole community of pupils, teachers and parents, we're not going to make anybody get sick if we can help it. And we know one of the ways we can stop that from happening is by taking the test. So I am expecting every parent to give consent. If there is a particular reason why a parent doesn't want to give consent or is uncomfortable about it, then I'm happy to speak to them about it more. But my expectation is there'll be consent for every pupil. Let's keep going. Is there a form? Yes, so as I said in the presentation, three ways you can provide consent. One is there's a link that you can click on on the Academy website that you can fill in the form online. And what we could do now, Mr. Cole could cleverly, I think maybe copy and paste the link to the the consent form into this conversation here so we could see it and you could do it straight away. Two, you will get a letter to your house. It might have arrived today. It might arrive tomorrow with a paper copy of the form. Parents can fill that in and children can bring it with them when they come to school. Three, if you call the school, we can arrange to take your consent over the phone. We just have to ask you some questions. Um, does the child do the test or will staff carry it out? Children will test themselves. There will be staff who are trained. So lots of our staff have been on a training course. There are staff who've been trained in testing who can help children if they need help. And there'll be lots of staff around if the child wants help. But actually what we found is doing it in school, children want to do it themselves. They feel more comfortable doing it themselves. So that's what we're gonna plan for. Do we take a test every week? What the government have said is for the first few weeks that pupils will be tested every week, well, every three to five days. So you'll be tested quite a lot through the first few weeks of school. What the plan then is, and the government haven't published the details of this yet, is that you'll be given some tests to take home and you can do the tests at home and then tell us the results afterwards. But for now, you will be tested in school quite regularly. If children are wearing masks, why do they need to test? It's a really good question, and I think I'm glad you asked. It's because we need to do everything we can to be safe. I've got my mask here. Like, I'd hope that if I had COVID and I was wearing it, I'd be keeping the people in this room uh, with me safe, but I can't be sure. And if somebody had COVID and they were in the school, even if they were wearing their mask all the time inside, but actually then when they went outside to lunchtime or when they went to eat their sandwich, someone was near to them, that's a risk. And because of how serious COVID is, because we know that so many children who go to our school have somebody in their family who's died or who's been very, very ill, because we know we've got members of staff in the school who've had COVID and who've been very, very ill, I'm not willing to take any risks. 
So I'm expecting everybody to give consent. What if a student has anxiety and wishes to sit separately to take their test? I really appreciate that question. That's a really good question. I'd hope when we explain to them how to do it, they'll feel comfortable and they'll be happy to do it in the same way as everybody else. But we will make it possible for some children, if they're particularly anxious to do it separately. What I would ask is, if that is you or your child, please let us know in advance so we can organise that. Because that would be very difficult to organise while the process was happening at the last minute if we weren't ready for it. So if that is true for you, then please get in touch with us, talk to us about it and we'll make a plan for you. Similarly, if your child doesn't want to do it themselves, they want an adult to do it for them, we can arrange that. But it's going to be difficult to arrange there on the day when everything's busy and all the children are there. So we're please going to ask you to tell us that in advance so we can make that arrangement. So let me talk again as slowly as possible about how the COVID testing will be carried out. When your child comes into school, they will go into a very large room where they are distanced from other people. There'll be a two metres distance between them and other children and other adults. Then some adults who are part of our testing team wearing full PPE, gloves, masks, goggles, everything else, will give them the things that they need to do the test. Mainly that is a swab to do the nose and to do the throat and a mini test tube for them to put the swab in. Then they will be shown by somebody how to do it. They will watch an adult or watch a video of someone showing them how to do it. They will do the test. They will do the, the swabbing. They will finish it and then they will give it to the test person who will take it and then 30 minutes later something will happen on the test after they put this, the, the um, material from the swab into it that will tell us whether it's positive or negative. We'll hope it's negative and we'll go back and tell them it's negative. Good job. Let's get on with learning. Or if it's positive, we'll make arrangements to talk to the family about that. Let's keep going. Um, will we be checking temperatures? No. So the national guidance has changed significantly to say to tell us that temperature checking is not an accurate way to keep people safe or to prevent COVID. What we've, we're very clear on is schools, businesses, other organisations that have large numbers of people moving through them. There are three key ways to keep everybody safe. One, distancing wherever possible, staying two metres apart. Two, wearing face coverings at all time. Three, testing. Temperature checking is inaccurate because there's lots of reasons why somebody's temperature might be over a certain point that have nothing to do with COVID. So schools have been told to stop doing temperature testing. OK, we've got a few more questions now um, about food and the food payment app. I'm really pleased we've got questions about those, so let's try and answer some of them. Um, so how is food going to happen? Let me try and read a couple of questions at once and try and answer them both. How will lunch times work? How will lunches be cooked? Good. So in the first few weeks when we reopen, we need to keep everything as safe as possible. So we're not going to have children mixing and going to the canteen. And so we're going to carry on with the pat lunches. What's good about the pat lunches is that we can give them to children to take outside to eat. And we know it's safer to eat outside where there's fresh air around them. That's really important. We're going to carry on doing that and we're going to carry on providing them for free as we've done all year until the Easter holidays. Then, then we're going to launch the app. I know we've been talking to some parents about it this week, getting them registered on it, and we'll talk to you more about it in the next few weeks so that parents are ready to start paying for school meals. At some point then after Easter, we will move from cold lunches to hot lunches. I can't tell you yet when that's going to happen because it needs to be linked to a lot of when we think it's safe for people to mix in the canteen again. But we're going to have to get to a point where we do start charging families for lunches, whatever happens, whether it's the pat lunches or the hot food. If it's the pat lunches, it'll be a very low cost. 
because the school can't keep providing things for free all of the time because it means we're spending less money on things that actually will help children learn in the future. So we're not going to talk about it too much this week or next week because that focus needs to be about COVID and testing. But then in the weeks after that, you will hear us talk a lot about the app, getting ready to make meal payments and how lunch will work. And again, I'm going to expect every parent to download the app. And unless your family is eligible for free school meals, I'm going to be expecting families to contribute towards the cost of lunches, whatever those lunches are. Let me read through a few more of these questions just for a moment to make sure that I've spoken about everything that could come through. Thank you for asking for another letter about the, the app. We will get one. I just don't want to confuse things at the moment. So we're just going to keep writing to you for now about COVID and testing. Once we're confident we've got all that information out, we'll then start asking you again about the app and everything you need to know. If you want to bring your own lunches, that is more than allowed. Very much encourage families to bring their own lunches if they wish to. OK, now we've got some questions that I know people have asked about before, which is about what's happening for year nine children starting GCSEs next year. So. Normally, about this time, we'd be talking to year nine pupils and their parents about which GCSEs they were going to do when they were in year 10. We haven't done it yet because I was hoping we could wait until school started again, and I think we can. It's not urgent. We've got until the end of the year to sort it out. Lots of families have asked me about it, though, so I do want to move things forward as quickly as possible. What I hope we will do. Is that we will have a session a bit like this for year nine parents. And we'll have some assemblies with year nine pupils. Just before the Easter holidays, so in two or three weeks time to give you all the information you need. Then pupils can have time over the holidays and parents over the holidays to do some thinking. And then we'll run the process straight after the Easter holidays. That is a bit later than when it would normally happen, but that's not a big problem. We've got we've got as much time as we need. It's not a rush. And also it means we can do it calmly and we can concentrate on it, not at the same time when we're busy trying to reopen the school and get things up and running again. OK, let's see what we've got coming next. Mr Coles just seeing if there's any questions left. And um, we're having a quick look. Some questions now about exams and the centre assessed grades. That's going to be our next theme. I'm very grateful for Mr. Cole kind of organising your questions into packages. Yes, BTEC students will also probably, I, mean, I said that very confidently, there's lots that's still a bit unknown. I would imagine that every pupil would fit, sit some sort of mini assessment in May. What's happening now, the reason why I can't be completely clear with you, is the consultation that the government put out about how grades should be worked out finished a couple of weeks ago and that's why I can tell you that it's definitely centre assessed grades but there's another consultation now about what evidence do schools need to provide for different courses so if you have A level students what evidence do you need to provide for their grade if you have BTEC students what evidence do you need to provide for their grade and so on and we're expecting the final announcement about that next week as soon as we have that we will use that to provide a summary for you, publish that so you know exactly what to expect. But I'll say what I've said a lot in these meetings, which is be ready for anything. Be ready for no exams, be ready for some exams in each of your subjects, because then if you're ready for anything, nothing will be a surprise. Um, good question about so about year 11 and year 13 sitting exams in May and sitting class assessments. So let me explain. We want pupils to have the experience of sitting a formal exam in the sports hall that's that's quite long, that's an hour, maybe a bit more than an hour, that covers lots of content, because that's going to be a useful piece of evidence in helping us make an accurate decision about their grades. But we also know if we say that's the only thing that's going to decide a pupil's grade, that's going to cause a lot of anxiety. And it's still not going to be completely fair. Some children might have missed some teaching about those topics because they didn't have a laptop then or they didn't have Internet then. There's going to be lots of things about it that aren't completely fair. So we want to give pupils other opportunities, shorter opportunities in class to produce more evidence about what they know and what they can do so we can put the two things together. So if a pupil has a really bad day or finds some of the questions on the more formal exams very difficult, that's not the end of the world. 
we've got this backup information, these other tasks that they've done that can help us make a decision. Like I said, we will publish a full plan about how that will look in every se separate subject before the Easter holidays, so you can spend time over the Easter holidays getting ready for them. Crucially, none of the work that you do between now and the Easter holidays will officially count towards that grade. Every, your teachers might do assessments with you or practice essays with you or practice work with you in the next two or three weeks. Those are going to be about your teachers trying to understand what you know and what you can remember so that they can teach you really well in, in lessons in the next few weeks. We'll start thinking about collecting evidence for your grade after the holidays. Current year 10 children, really great question. Current year 10, current year 12 have got the biggest job right now because they next summer, I am 99.999% sure, will do real exams and will get graded in the same way as children are have been done in previous years. It won't be teachers deciding the grades for them. So we've got to work really hard in years 10 and 12 and part of that will be full mock exams before the summer, getting grades, getting predicted grades, reporting those back to pupils and parents. So look forward to those and be ready for those. Questions now about um, reopening. So let's have a look and see what those are. Will there be detentions? Yes, of course. Behaviour system will be just as normal. Um, everything hopefully will be just as normal as before. You do not need to wear gloves. We would encourage you though to be washing your hands with hand sanitizer as much as possible. And next up, we have another question. Do we need to bring anything? Really good question. On the first day when they come for their 90 minutes, just their pencil case will be sufficient. And then they need to bring all of their things back with them on the following day where they're coming back full time. When the children go back, will Friday be a full day? The timetable will be the same. So children will continue to finish at um, 2.20 on a Friday. Will the two metre rule be in place? No, it's very difficult to make two metres rule work in the school when it's full of children. It, it would be impossible. The school is not big enough for the two metre rule to be in place. And to be clear, none of the national guidance or instructions are about two metre distancing. What will be in place is strong encouragement of when it is possible to be two metre distance to be so. So the teachers, for example, moving around the school, when we see each other in the corridor, we're making sure we stay two metres away from one another. But when children go into lessons, they're going to be sat in classrooms. We couldn't fit all the children in classrooms and have them two metres away from each other. There's not enough space in the school. That's why the wearing of masks and the COVID testing is so important. That's what's going to make it safe. I can see one more question here. For lessons like English and maths, are we transitioning? No. OK, school is going to run in exactly the same way as it did before the holiday, where children have their classroom that they learn in and their teachers move around the school and go to them rather than the pupils all moving around the school and mixing up. It's going to be safer. It's going to be calmer. It's going to be more organised. Will they carry on doing PE? Yes, PE will run as normal and children should be wearing their PE kit on the days when their class has PE, which will be the same days as before. I know some children may have forgotten their timetable. It is still hopefully stuck in their planner, but it's also something we can do on the day they come for their practice lesson. We can remind them about their timetable and which days they have PE. Good. Um, I've just lost the screen just for one second. Let me see what's happening. I'm back. Good question about uniform. So obviously through the year, every year, not just in pandemic years, children grow. And when children grow and they get to a bigger size, they need to um, order the next size up and, and replace it. And that is the same this year, just as any other year. I have been made aware though that Clive Marks has got some stock issues. Um, I think a lot of their goods travel from abroad where they've been made. That's fine. But again, please let us know in advance or please give your child a, a note. Please email the head of year or call Mr Hoban or email the school. We need to know that sort of thing, ideally before children arrive, because otherwise a child's going to walk into school. I'm going to see them on the door and I'm going to say, where's your blazer? And then they're going to tell me, oh, this has happened. 
and they're going to walk down the corridor and see Mr. Cole and Mr. Cole's going to say, where's your blazer? And suddenly they've had 10 conversations with teachers about where their blazer is, and that's going to be stressful for the teacher, stressful for the child. If we know in advance, we can let teachers know that this particular child's not going to have a blazer and, and we're going to know not to be challenging about it. So just let us know, please. Um, will there be clubs? I love after school clubs and I wish we could run them all of the time. We obviously haven't run them this year and that's because we haven't wanted all the bubbles to be mixing up. I would really, really hope that before the end of the year, clubs can start again. But I can't promise they will start again yet. We have to see how things go in terms of the R rates, in terms of how things go with COVID. What I will keep coming back to, though, is if we stop COVID spreading by making sure that everyone's tested, then everything will be safer. If things are safer, then we can do things like open the canteen. We can do things like run after school clubs. But if we're a school that has a very low number of children who have given consent to be tested, then we're not going to be a safe school and a safe school can't run clubs. So please, please, please get the consent form filled in. Trips, exactly the same answer. I love trips even more than I love clubs. Um, trips, I think, are one of the most important things schools do. I wish as a school that we had a trip happening every week. Um, but we can't do them right now. I don't think we'll be able to do them before the summer. Maybe we will. I don't think we will. That's going to have to be something that waits till next year. But again, as soon as we can be confident that the community is safe, the sooner we can start doing more exciting things. The way we know the community is going to be safe is if everyone's getting their COVID test. So please fill in the consent form. And just seeing, I think we're coming towards the end of questions. Mr. Cole's got a few more for us. Some children will be fasting after Easter. If mask wearing is to continue after Easter, will these children be exempt? It's a really good question. I can't give you an answer now. I need to think about it a little bit more. I haven't thought about the, the impact of mask wearing on children who are fasting. I don't think we can compromise the safety, though, of the school. We obviously have a huge number of children who will be observing Ramadan, and we can't have a huge number of children not wearing a mask. So mask wearing is going to be required, I'm almost certain, even if children are fasting, and we're going to have to find a way of addressing that. What I would strongly recommend, particularly if you have younger children, children in year seven and eight, is you think very carefully about the extent to which you do want them to take part, part in Ramadan and fasting all day. I think there are a lot of concerns at the moment. We need children to be maintaining their health and their energy levels. That's part of staying safe from COVID. And I would not want anything to compromise that. So I'm not going to commit right now, but I'm 99% sure I'm going to be asking every child to be wearing a face covering, even if they're fasting. And so I'd ask everyone to reflect on the extent to which then it would be appropriate to fast for all children. Let's see what questions are coming next. Scrolling down. How can parents check homework marks? My favourite question of the evening. Thank you so much. That's exactly what I want parents to be doing. Uh, it's a new system trying to get homework right. What I hope we'll be able to do is a bit like the report cards we've been sending about remote learning. We'll be able to send parents something like that every week is my hope. I haven't quite got a plan for it yet, but that's going to be my goal. Um, but we can also teach parents some other clever things they can do themselves and Hegarty Maths and on the website where they can go in and, and see the work and the scores their, ch their children have been doing. So we'll find a way of, of getting some guidance and some support for parents so they can see how to do that for themselves. But crucially, we're definitely going to try and make some sort of report card process work for you as well. OK, we're coming up towards six o'clock. We're not going to be able to do too many questions, um, but Mr. Cole's going to select a final two or three to, to get us going of what we have left. Really a question about year seven. So this is from someone who's got a daughter in who's going to be in year seven next year. They haven't been given a place. Lots of families are going to be feeling that disappointment. The first thing I'll say for, for this person is if you already have a child in the school, then I'm surprised that your child didn't get a place. It is probably because on the application form, it wasn't clear that they had a sibling in the school. 
hopefully that's something we can fix for you. What you're going to need to do is get in touch with the school as soon as possible by emailing info at arcsandalbans.org or calling the school tomorrow. Tell us about your situation and we'll give you some advice around next steps. OK, that's a really good question. Let's see what's coming next. Just loading up. Here we go. Azure 10 have PE on Thursday we'll, when we, and we come back to school that day. Will PE happen? So Thursday is the day after year 10 have had their tests. They'll be tested. Then we'll, we will be having PE. We're going to make sure we do it as safely as possible. Yes, PE can take place. Um, library. Again, for me, the library is a bit like the club's answer. We can't have the library open as normal because there's too much mixing going on of different bubbles and different year groups. So it can't open like normal yet. Again, I, I hope it will in the future. However, we are making sure that there are um, mini libraries, mini collections of books available to children in their classrooms, either through their form tutors or English teachers. So they should be able to take books home. And hopefully the homework that we're going to be setting through English is going to make that a more organised system because a lot of that, particularly for younger children, will be about making sure they've got a book and they're reading. OK, checking with Mr Cole to see what he has to say. A few closing comments coming through from parents. So let's have a look at those. Um, thank you for the sign language. My hand gestures, something I do a lot. Much appreciated. Um, that's very kind of you to share. Um, Mr. Coles and Mr. I'm not Mr. Head, I'm Mr. Rimmer, the head teacher. Um, we do feel like old friends now. I feel like obviously I can't see you. You can see me. You might be sitting very comfortably in your houses in your pajamas. I'm, I'm still at school, but I'm having a nice time. Um, is it being done next week? Yes, we'll carry on every week at five o'clock for now on is the plan. Um, we, we might not do it every week forever, but I think for the next few weeks we've got a lot to talk about, so we'll carry on doing that. OK, we're going to stop there. Thank you for your questions. We can still see all of the questions, even if they didn't get published, so I will read them so I know what's on people's minds. Really grateful for you joining and attending. Um, we'll share a video recording of this as well when your heads of year send out emails in the morning. So if you know there were some people that weren't here but would like to hear what I've had to say, you can share that link with them as well. Really appreciate your time, everybody. Speak to you all soon. Goodbye. <laughs>